Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial from the Age of Darkness, and today we are painting Rogel Dawn, the Praetorian himself. Here he is in all of his glory. He looks fantastic. It's an awesome Primark model from Forge World, and we're going to be painting him up today. Now, we're going to be painting him and his scenic base, but as you can see, we've got them separated, including the two little bits here. So we're just pop them into focus just for the moment. So we're gonna just keep them separate for now. It goes something like that and he goes in there. Uh, we're gonna paint him, then we're gonna paint his base and this at the same time. So we're gonna pop that to one side. He has been primed in grey seer. This gives us a slightly darker, colder look as you want from the Horus Heresy miniatures. And, well, we're gonna grab our paints grab our brushes, and then get started. So the place we're gonna start with Rogel Dawn is on all of his armor. It's the part that makes the most sense, right? And the color we're gonna be using is Retributor Armor. Now, helpfully, it's quite simple, and we're just gonna be applying this Retributor Armor over the top of all of his armor. Now, he does have extra gold details. For example, on the chainsword, but we're not gonna be doing that just now. We're gonna get to those a little bit later. So for now we're just going to focus on the armor, we're going to get that all done, and then we're going to move on to the next couple of details. So you could paint it in now at this point, but you'll make life harder for yourself a little bit later, a little bit further down the line. So for now, just focus on the armor, get this Retributor armor all over, and then once that's done, we shall return. Nice and simple to kick things off. So with that Retributor armor applied to all of the armor, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Contrast Medium and Fire Slayer Flesh. This is my favorite gold recipe. And we're gonna be applying this all over all of the gold. So with that done, we've got this beautifully shaded gold armor, but now it's time to brighten it right back up. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Retributor armor, and we're gonna start applying this over the top of the flat sections of the armor. Now it's not gonna look like it's doing very much around here on the, on the leg, other than kind of just re-brightening it. But that's okay, that's what we want to happen. Whereas on kind of the slightly more shaded areas, it's gonna have a lot more impact. These are quite flat areas. So like that sort of thing. Just gonna keep going. that sort of thing. We've got one more there on that leg. Just there, 
like that. So as you can see now, that leg is nice and bright and shiny. Whereas if we compare it to the other leg, not so much. Now, you're not gonna be able to do this on every single detail. In fact, you shouldn't. So anything that's kind of quite narrow, for example, just here, as you can see, we're not gonna do that. We wanna leave that as it is. But this little area here on the elbow, we're absolutely gonna do. So we want that to be nice and bright, like that. Then we skip over that trim section and within here, we're gonna apply some of that retributor armor. You just want to do this kind of to the best of your ability. Like that sort of thing. You can do this all over the gold. So just hunt out those nice smooth areas. So with that Retributor Armour all applied, as you can see, got some beautiful shine now returned to the model. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add some highlights. Now the first one is going to be a roughly two part Stormhost Silver to one part Retributor Armour mix. I'm going to be using this to highlight every single edge. Now there are a lot all of the flouncy decoration. <laughs> we got all of the edges of the gold armor details that we've just redone with. Retributor armor. to get through so just take your time here Be methodical. So with that done, we now have beautiful, shiny gold armor. It looks fantastic. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna finish it off by taking some thin down Stormhouse Silver and just picking out the corners. So with that done, all of our gold armor is now finished and I hope you agree that it looks awesome. Oh, <laughs> so awesome, it's trying to get away from me. Right, what we're gonna do now is gonna move on to our next color and that's gonna be all the black details. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of Black Legion and we're gonna apply this over the top.
just like this. So with that black legion applied to the little cables in here on his tummy, the soft joints around his armor and the bolt gun casing as well as the two cables on the top just there, what we're going to do is we're going to move on because we're just waiting for that to dry at the moment. But what we are going to do is we're going to move on to another focal point of the miniature and that's going to be the face. Now the color we're going to be using is Fire Slayer Flash. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to apply this over the top. Of his face. Just like that. And with that fire slayer flesh applied, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of basilicanum gray and we're gonna apply this over the top of his hair. And it is gonna be that bright white, but we want a really nice, very clear shading on here. An apothecary white or soul blight gray just isn't going to cut it. So you just want to get this very carefully over the top of his hair. You don't need loads here. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Kislev Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone. And we're going to use this to effectively re-layer his face. Towards the front. So we're just going to be picking out All the raised details, such as his cheekbones, the bridge of his nose, just avoiding anywhere where our fire slayer flesh is settled. So with that done, we're then going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Flayed One Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone. What we're going to do here is we're going to start adding a slightly narrower highlight. So we're just going to be picking out the sharpest points on Dawn's face. And so with that then done, we're going to take some thin down flayed one flash. I'm going to apply this the absolute corners of these sharp details. So we've got the tip of his nose and across the bridge. We've got this little corner of his cheekbone there.
and there we've got his frown lines got the chin just like that sort of thing and so with that now done what we're going to do is we're going to take a very tiny amount of black legion and we're going to apply this over the top of his eyeballs as well as over his teeth. So with that Black Legion applied, we then want to take the tiniest dot of Screaming Skull. And we want to apply this in each corner of the eyeballs. And over the top of his teeth. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Corax White. I'm going to use this to highlight his eyebrows. And all of his hair. So with that done, what we can now do is move on. And we're going to move on to the next largest area, and that's going to be the cloak. Now, it is going to be a nice, lovely, deep, rich, gorgeous royal red. Now, the chainsword is also red, but it's a different kind of red. So, we're just going to be focusing on the cloak for now. And the colour we're going to be using first is Baal Red. So with that Baal Red all applied, it's still drying at the moment, but what we're going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over the Chainsword. So with that done, we're still waiting for that cloak to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Volupus Pink and we're going to apply this over the top of the soft grip on the chainsword. And then next up, we're going to take some Thins Down Lead Belcher. I'm going to apply this to the teeth of the chainsword, mechanical areas of the bolt pistol, or bolt gun, I think it's a bolt gun, and 
the mechanical areas on the chainsaw as well. And any other areas you want to be silver. So with that lead belcher applied, the cloak is now finally dry. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and blood angels red. And we're gonna apply this over the top of the cloak. So with that Blood Angels Red applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of shading, only we're gonna be doing a recessed shade here, we're gonna be doing a bit of blending. Now the color we're gonna be using is a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part Saigor Brown. And what we're looking for is any kind of dark recesses. We want it to be kind of a very kind of strong shading, but we want it to be quite soft on the edges. So the best place to demonstrate this is right here in this large area just here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right under here I'm going to take our Saigal Brown mix. I'm going to paint it all over this section. Like this. Coming out like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth it out. Just like that sort of thing. We want to do that for all of our recesses. Now there's a lot, so you will just want to be very careful here, just quite methodical as you go along. Just got one here. So with that Saigal Brown mix applied, what we're now gonna do is gonna brighten it back up. And we're gonna use this by adding a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're gonna be using this over the top of our flat, wide areas. Just like this sort of thing. So with that done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take Evil Sun Scarlet on its own 
I'm going to apply a much narrower layer of this. We're not looking to cover the entirety of the fold. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of Wild Rider Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to use this as our kind of brightest colour along the sharpest folds in the cloak. So we've got this kind of little area here. We've got this section. there So with that done, just to finish it off, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Blood Angels Red Mix. And we're going to apply this over all of it. So this is going to include over the top of our Saigor brownie bits. Over the top of all of those layers. This is just going to tie it all together. So with that now done, what we can do is we can colour in the rest of the gold details. Now this is going to include this detailing here on the back of the cloak. It's going to include the little kind of aquila just there on the bolt gun. And we've got decorative features on the what stain? Chainsword. That's the badger. So we're going to start doing that in the same way as we did the rest of the gold. So we're not going to film all of it because we've already done it. So if you'd like to remind yourself how to do this, you can just rewind the video. But we start out with Retributor Armor, then we use some Fire Slayer Flash, and then we highlighted it up using that Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armor mix, and then a final spot highlight of Stormhost Silver. So with all of that gold now done, all the way around, as you can see, it's looking fantastic. What we're going to do now is we're going to add a shade, and that's going to be some Space Wolves Grey. I'm going to apply this over the top 
of all the silver. So with that done, we've actually just got one last base coat to apply and that is going to be some Skeleton Horde over the top of the bolt gun handle. So with that skeleton horde applied, all of our base coats are now on, so it's time to start finishing him off. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone now, and we're going to use this to highlight all of those black details. So with that Dawnstone all applied, we're then going to take some Iron Breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the silver. And with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Thin Down Evil Sun Scarlet. I'm going to use this to highlight the Chainsword. So with that now done, we're going to take some Screaming Skull and use this to highlight the pistol grip. So with that done, Rogal Dawn is very nearly finished. There's only a couple of things left to do and these are all gems. So. He's got two different colors of gems, but thankfully he hasn't got tons of them. So what we have is we've got a blue gem here on the uh, chainsaw. We've got a couple of blue gems going across the belt in there. But the other ones that are on him, so the ones on his legs and these tiny ones here on his shoulders, those are going to be red. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the red ones and we're going to use some Flesh Terrors Red over the top of the gold. And with that Flesh Terror's Red applied, we're then going to take some Talisar Blue and we're going to apply this over the top of the Blue Gems. So 
So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Fire Dragon Bright, just a very really tiny amount. We're going to add a little bit of a highlight, almost a dot, in the bottom right corner. Of each of the gems. And with that done, we're then going to do the exact same thing on the blue gems with some Baharoth blue. And finally, Across all of the gems, red and blue, we're going to take some Corax white and in the opposite corner to where we just added our highlight, we add a little dot. Just like this. So with that, the main man himself is now finished, as you can see, and well, it's now time to move on to the base and the two bits of extra rock. That's just why it's here before you on the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out by taking some Basilicanum Grey. And we're going to be applying this to all of the fallen rock and kind of gravel stuff around here and all over the base like this. This is one of the biggest sections. This is going to include any kind of sort of rubbly parts. Like that sort of thing. And we're just looking for all of these areas sandwiched between the steps and things like that. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Nuln Oil and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the rest of the masonry. So with that null oil applied to all of that stonework, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this over the top of it just like this. Now you don't need tons of Seraphim Sepia here, just enough to add that little bit of kind of grimy dirt in there. If you have too much, it'll appear really yellow and that's not what we're after after that kind of finish just there. It does dry a bit darker though, so just go to the pot a little and often, grabbing small amounts here and there, and just watch out for any dark pools. But like I said, you really don't need a lot here.
So with that seraphim sepia all applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some gray sear and we're gonna add a dry brush of this over the top of all our stonework. And you can catch a little bit of this over the top of the, the rubble. That's okay, that doesn't matter too much. But what we're looking for here is quite a rough dry brush around all the masonry. So with that done, the stonework is all finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry brush all of the rubble and the first color we're gonna be using to do this, we're gonna do a couple here, uh, is going to be Steel Legion Drab. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of do this in patches here. We're not gonna do all of the stone, or the rubble I should say. We're just looking to pick out quite a significant portion of it, don't get me wrong, but Quite a rough dry brush this. Got a loose bit of rock there. Just move that out of the way just for a moment. With that steel lesion drab dry brush applied, we're then going to do a dry brush of Dawnstone. We're just going to try and hit the places we haven't hit, and also just kind of go over a bit of the steel lesion drab areas. As you can see, I'm being a lot briefer here. And finally, we're gonna use some Administratum Grey and we're gonna be very gentle here. And we're just gonna apply this in a couple of little patches here and there, over the top of all that dirt. So with that done, as you can see, Rogel Dawn's base is mostly finished. In fact, his is finished. He doesn't require anything else. He doesn't have any other details, but we've not finished with his scenic base just yet. So what we're gonna do is now finish off his scenic base. Now on the box art, or rather the pirate photography on the Forge World website, they've painted the fallen marine and these bits around here as night lords, which I don't really understand. So, <laughs> What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint it as Alpha Legion for the conflict on, I want to say Pluto, I think it was Pluto. Um, Praetorian of Dawn is the book I'm thinking of. It's a really, really good book. So we're gonna paint these as Alpha Legion. And we've done a video on how to do these, so I'm gonna be following that recipe, but we're gonna be doing it again here. So what I'm doing here is I'm 
going to be coating all of the armor pieces with some iron hand steel. So we've got the Marine himself there. We've got a helmet over here. We've got a shoulder pad there and a shoulder pad there. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and a Keelian green. I'm going to apply this over the top of all of the armor to get that lovely Alpha Legion-esque finish. So with that Achillean green and contrast medium mix applied, as you can see, we've got that lovely metallic Alpha Legion color. So what we're gonna do, just to take the edge off it just slightly, is take some Coelia green shade. And we're gonna apply this over the top. Of the Achillean green. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this to the soft details in his armor. Any of the ribbed cabling and the bolt gun casing just here. And so with that now done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Garagax sewer. I'm gonna apply this over the top of all the leathers. We've got a little pouch just here. And then there's two on the belt of the corpse as well. And with that now done, we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our remaining details. So with that now done, we're going to take some Null Oil. I'm going to use this to shade all of our silver. As well as the bolt gun casing. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of the silver and all of the Achillean green armor using some thinned down iron hand steel.
And so with that done, we're then going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and going to apply this over the eye lenses. And so with that done, we're then going to take some Dawnstone. I'm going to use this to highlight the bolt gun. So with that done, Rogal Dawn is now finished and the only thing that's left to do is to colour in the base rim and this kind of edge around here of the base, of the scenic base itself. The colour we're going to be using for that is a bad and black. And so with both bases complete, the diorama bit and his actual bit that he's standing on, Rogal Dawn, the Primarch of the Imperial Fists, is now finished. And he looks absolutely fantastic. I've just noticed there's a bit of a dust there on the cape. Whoops. <laughs> well, there you go. Another Primarch in resin, all done for you. I hope you enjoyed this one. I really liked doing this one. Quite an understated Primarch, this one. And compared to things like the Lion and Sanguinis, he's positively boring. Except he's not. He's awesome. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.